So good morning, everybody. Let us start uh, this morning session with Patrick Ferrari from Bonn, who will speak to us about stationary half space last passage percolation. Okay. Thank you for inviting me coming here. Is a I enjoying this place. The weather is very good. We even have earthquake that makes the life more less no less annoying with some earthquake here and there. So what I want to speak today is about an, uh, the half space as passage percolation in the stationary case. And this is a, mod, is a model in the KPZ University class that we could solve using integrable structure. This is the reason why I was chosen for this conference. Okay. Okay. Since more, many of you are less familiar with the percolation, but know much more the exclusion process, I will shortly explain a little bit the connection between the two. So essentially, are two sided of the same coin picture. So the totally asymmetric simple exclusion process, I assume that you know, where you have one Z particle in our setting jump to the right with rate one, provided that is not occupied. And the second model, where many of you are less familiar, is the last passage percolation. So you can think as the following, you have a line that is got right, can be fixed, can be random, but just an initial set of points. On the right, you have all exponential one independent random variable. Then you take one point MN here, for example, and you ask, you look all possible paths going from, starting from the line. In some case, the line can be reduced to a point also from the line that are right and up, upright paths. So for each pass, P, go from the line to MN, you associate an, say a length or an energy is the sum of the random variable that you see. This random variable, and then you look at the maximum of this. This is la the last passage time. So these random variables are intimately related to the waiting time of the jump for the exclusion process. So I wanted to mention the connection. The connection in one formula is this, if you have, uh, I, meant, I should have mentioned here, I use the con convention that I level the particle and particle N is to the right of particle N plus one. So you have right to left ordering. And usually you say particle zero around zero or say particle number one is the first to the left of the origin. And then you have this easy relation. So if you are interested in the position of particle, which can see, be seen as a height function as well. Then the distribution of particle is given by the, is given in terms of the distribution of the last passage time. So the connection is the following. If you take the L as the initial line to be the position XK of zero is the position of particle K at time zero plus K and K, this element. And then the k could be n, could be a subset depending on how many particles you have. Then you have this connection. So, to, so the blue region here is the region where the last passage time was below t. Then you can think the, the following. So there is a border of this area. And then you can think that on this point, on the vertical point, you can also think that there is a particle. And actually the position of the particle is just the projection on this line. So then what happens is when here there is a, so this random variable can be used in the last passage time exactly when the, the, these two are already used and then you add an exponential waiting time. This correspond in the TASA picture to have one particle here, one hole to the right. So the right, the position to the right is empty, and then you wait an exponentially waiting time. So this omega 
IJ is exactly the waiting time for particle at le level J to go from a position to the next one. So R2, you can listen to TASF or LPP. Both are F nice. In both cases, you can do the same stuff, but the advantage of the last passage time is last passage percolation. Visually, it's easier to think because there is no time explicitly. It's, is one of the dimension. You can think that his is like position and the, in this direction plays the role of time. There is one case where you have the initial condition, you've put all particles to the left of the origin. And you do, in this case, the L is essentially reduced to a single point because L would be this vertical line, but the last passage time is maximized over pass, which actually starts from here, because any if you start from here, you can still go down, you get a larger last passage time. So this is a special case. Now I want to mention two cases. The first one is the point-to-point -point last passage percolation, where you put, you consider omega ij to be exponential one, where ij is positive and zero otherwise. And please, is exactly this situation, you have a point to point problem. The second is the stationary situation. This you can see in two equivalent way. One way is to have this line, the blue line to be a random walk. A second equivalent way that is equivalent using a Burke theorem is that you can simply put some boundary condition as follows. So here you have, the, there is a parameter alpha that is essentially one, one half plus alpha is the density of particle in TASEP. And on this boundary, you put exponential with parameter one half minus alpha. In this boundary, you put this other exponential and here put zero. No, don't put anything, it's just zero. And then this, this will be a stationary model. I will go to the half space just later. First, I explain what is known in the full space because the other one is, has a lot of similarities, although the formula are more complicated. What is known is, for example, the point-to-point -point last passage percolation is known that the limit in distribution, so typically the last passage time to be until position and n is around 4n, fluctuation of the order n to the one first, and the low is the GUE tracing on distribution. It was proven a long time ago, already by your aunts and companies. So it, well, I don't put citation because otherwise the, all the slide will be over full. And then there is a second case where you have considered the stationary, put stat for stationary, so if you look the last passage time at the distance, if you look at a point uh, here for alpha equals to zero in the in a neighborhood of the diagonal at the distance of order n to the two over three and the parameter that tell you how far you are from the diagonal is w and this you get in the limit the bike range distribution with parameter v. And this kind of one point distribution for some for geometric on order obtained by bike on range. That's why it takes the name. So here we state for alpha equal to zero. You can do a similar statement for order alpha, but then the centering is a different center. But the limiting result on the is universal for any alpha. Now I wanted to show you the structure of bike range and then explain where is this formula coming from. So this form, this exact function, you don't have to memorize to have an idea what how they look. So the bike range distribution is, the, is a derivative of the product of the gauge FGUE is the one that you get from point to point without the boundary term times a function G and G is a function minus the resolvent apply a scalar product between a function, a resolve, the resolvent of this times another function. The structure is this one. If I've never seen this, you might wonder where it's coming from. 
where it's coming from it can be explained, of course, in detail, but as follows. So, and here come the integrable structure. From this model here, we don't have any. So, starting from this, it's not that we have a formula and distribute this. If, if you look at the partition, well, this is related to partition well, but it's partition. But with this one, starting from this one, we don't have an, an exact formula, but we have to work to get to an exact formula. So the first step is to start with modifying the model. So here on the boundary, you put exponential one plus alpha, this is as before. Here you put one half plus beta, minus alpha. Here in the corner, you put an exponential alpha plus beta. So, and for this one, as soon as alpha plus beta, you can use a sure process to tell you that the distribution function of the last passage time in this setting that I put tau here is given by a Fredon determinant with a kernel depending on alpha and beta. So what we have, to, the stationary, the L, this LPP minus tau, because we have to put zero here, but then you have to take the limit beta goes to. This looks already good because you have a start point. So the first is step is to remove this tau. So writing actually the Laplace transform of this one and do some computation to get that formula of the, this one, the, the one with putting the zero on, on, on the zero zero position in terms of the, the other one, the full problem where you have the data. Notice there is one over alpha plus beta, and the derivative is, com is coming from this shift argument. So by removing the value here, you get a derivative. Now, what happens if you take alpha plus beta very small? Of course, this last passage time becomes huge because it is tau, and the average of this tau is simply one over alpha. So when alpha beta goes to zero, this distribution becomes very large. So this distribution function will go to zero. And it will go to zero linearly in alpha plus beta to cancel this one. Otherwise, it would not be consistent. And for so this one, and alpha plus beta goes to zero because this distribution function will go to zero like alpha plus beta. So what remains is to consider this determinant divided by alpha plus beta and look to minus alpha. Now, if you look at the formula, it turns out that this kernel is essentially the kernel without the boundary term plus alpha plus beta multiplied by a function of R x and then function of y. So this is a rank one perturbation. Therefore, if you look right the with k alpha beta is equal to the Fresnel determinant without the boundary from the FGUE times one minus alpha plus beta and then the resolvent F alpha G beta. This is a standard formula for any rank one perturbation. So what you have to take, see is what is the limit when beta goes to minus alpha is object, essentially of one. So for this one need to do an analytic continuation. We have to see essentially from this formula where the one over alpha plus beta is coming from because it has to be canceled in some way. And then cut this, you can think that this you can one minus k to minus one, you can develop in the identity plus one minus k to minus one times k. It's like the series, the geometric series. I don't remember the name that is used for operator, but you have two terms. 
This one is an explicit formula. This you can explicitly compute and it's easy to see that it's analytic. So you can take the limit and you get R. And this one, once you multiply by K is also everything very nice, very easy, standard, no problem. So this is the origin of this distribution function. So most, the first result that were obtained for determinant for stationary model in the full space KPC were for the PNG or TASEP or last pass at circulation. This was extended to joint distribution at different times. For this, the strategy was that to do the analytic continuation turn, turn out to be a little bit tricky. It was a work with Jinho and Sandri. And more recently, for any result was in mathematics and physics. These are essentially all mathematics paper, almost all, more or less. But there are so using the, rep, rep, the moment formula and replica approach, like Pierre and collaborator were doing. But essentially we have for the one point distribution, we have, there are results also for the KPZ equation, for the partial asymmetric and so on using different techniques. Now what we wanted is now to look at the analog, but in half space. There have been already the talk by Matteo that he spoke about half space KPZ. Now we look at space, but for the discrete model, which is easier to define. And let's see what we can do. So the definition of the half space last passage percolation is similar, except the boundary instead of being here is on the diagonal. Otherwise it's exactly the same distribution. In terms of the exclusion process means that you have a system where you start in Z plus, you put Bernoulli random variable with density one half plus alpha. And then at the origin at zero, you have some reservoir, which when the, the side at one is empty, you can you put a new particle with rate one half plus alpha. So there is a rate coming in and then in an initial density that is all already stationed. And this turns out to be a stationary model. Otherwise the LPP is defined in the same way. And now this is this in the full space, but also in the hard space is called stationary because you have this kind of property. If you, so if you look the increment here on the diagonal, on the horizontal, for example, or on the vertical, in the horizontal, for example, there the increment are just independent random variable with this parameter exponential. And this turns out to be true, even if you look higher. So if you look the increment along this line, it will still be IID exponential with the same parameter. And similarly, actually for the vertical increment and so on. So this was proven by Balashka, Torum, Pimen, except Pelainin already in 2006 for the full space, for the half space is the same proof. There is not really something new. So now for the half space, we have to think a little bit how to scale. So first case is suppose that alpha is strictly less than zero, which means zero. So these parameter are more than one half. So you have a lot of weight here. The weight here are more dominant with respect to this one. Now region where the which are non-trivially correlated, they call characteristics, which is less than one, which means point on this picture. Will be non-trivially correlated, like Q, and this will be a distance N. So there will be some, so the, so there will be some intersection with, with, with this region. 
and with this region. And this this pitch, this situation is going to be very close to the stationary one because in the full space, in the full space, you have only interaction with the boundary at the beginning and then you don't have interaction. And here is the same, is a little bit geometrical different, but the limiting result is going to be this. To take a point that is really an end point here, since these have the tendency to go in this direction, this, these are the paths which maximize the low of large, you know, the last passage percolation. You can call it geodesic sometimes, depending on your on what you want. So these are the paths which maximize. This will tend to go touch the diagonal a lot of time, probably order n. And therefore you will you expect to see simply Gaussian distribution because every time that touches, essentially you have kind of renewal stuff or IID stuff. So it's not exactly, but in, one can think like that. So here, if, you, if alpha less than zero, you expect to see normal distributed random variable in square root of n scale. We did not prove, but it's quite clear that it should be this pitch. The second case is when alpha is positive and take the last point here, this, the maximizer will tend to uh, reach a position on the axis, which is a distance order n from the region. So if it order n, then what, what is the length of this maximizer? So you have the sum of IID random variable here, n of them. So you have a square root of n Gaussian fluctuation from here. Then from here to here, you have typically KPZ fluctuation, but these are only n to the one over three, so they are irrelevant. So you will see only Gaussian fluctuation. So it's also not interesting, always not so interesting. So in order to see something non-trivial, we have to take alpha close to zero. And the precise scaling, you have to take alpha of order n to the minus one over three. And delta is the parameter that you are free to choose afterward. On the end point, if you look this kind of picture and you look, given the alpha on that scale, you look which position is roughly, which is, if you start from the region, you follow the characteristic, where do you land? You will see that you land on a position of order n to the two first. So we take a pos eta, so we take the end point close to the diagonal at distance so essentially u n to the two first. Eta n is essentially u n to the two first. So the expected value of this one, because it's stationary, is, is the, sum, the sum of the expected value of the increment. And this is trivial to compute, is essentially this quantity. So in, since the fluctuation of order n to the one first, we can, in the scaling, we have to remove this blue part. Whether we remove the, this part or not is up to a choice. In the end, we decide not to remove, but you can put a doc afterwards if you want. So we think the result analog to the bike range result is the following. If you look the last passage time centered by the first two term of the low of large number divided by n to the one first is given by distribution function, which structure is a derivative coming from the shift argument. This is a Fred on Fafian, but it's just point to point to point problem without the boundary. Times a function g that is have the same mathematical structure, except that there are two by two block instead of one by one. But essentially is the, stru the structure is very, very similar. Therefore you can imagine how did we got to this one? So I explain you that bike range distribution was arising. Now I, I you do essentially, so the strategy is to do essentially the same. At some point we had a problem, but it's not a, the formula are not so important. Oh, there are ah, two. So this, one obtained different diagonal by Mamuro Satamoto, and then a complete rigorous work was made by Baik and then Guillaume, that is here, Ivan Corvin and Tufik. And 
2018. So this is essentially the problem without the boundary. Now you might wonder, this derivative is a little bit problem, but suppose that you want, if you have this, this for distribution function, you want to compute something. Is, there is this derivative. Derivative are bad numerically, you know. It's, it's better not to do derivative numerically. And also you have an inverse of, an inverse of some operator that is also numerically maybe borderline. It's not maybe, but this is not a problem. Suppose that you want to compute moments. When the expected value is stationary, so we know. We don't have to do anything. But if you look higher moment, if you integrate by parts, you see that the der if the function is a derivative of another function, is the distribution function, by integration by parts, you get some integral only where the derivative disappear. So which means if you want to look moments numerically, in principle, you don't have problem of taking derivative. This is a probability one computation is nothing special. And then, but what about this inverse operator? This is also not a problem because this inverse operator is always multiplied by the Pfaffian. And something that I learned from Sasamoto for the, it was in one of his paper, I never realized before for the full space case is that if you have something like that, this you can write as a linear combination of two normal Pfaffian. And to evaluate numerical Pfaffian or Fredlund determinant, you can use the numerical as the kernel are analytic, the convergence is and you can put in a computer and do the stuff. I did not do myself, but it's possible. There is no major uh, problem in principle because all, all these functions here, I, I did not write them explicitly, but I've written in terms of no theory function, so you can implement. Now, how did we solve this one? We used an integrable model and it's very similar to the other one. It just put exponential one plus beta here and exponential alpha plus beta here. In this term, this process is really a professional process. You can look in this paper that I already mentioned. And from this, we get, so that this for beta positive, the distribution of the problem with the boundary is given up in terms of a Pfaffian sure process, Pfaffian, The formula, these are not important. Just there, if you are, if you know how to work, you see that there are a bunch of easy stuff, time standard stuff. It's not really a problem. You can do a synthetic quite in a trivial way. It's not nothing special. But now the second step is apply the shift argument is the same statement as before. So the distribution given that you have omega zero zero equal to zero, is just essentially the derivative of the, of this one. The next you do a perturbation. In the K bar, the alpha beta still play a role, but they are analytic, so there is no problem. The only problem is that in the rank one perturbation, everything is a two by two matrix, but the rank one perturbation, there are some F beta here that are exponential minus beta X. So when beta is positive, they go to zero exponentially, but beta is positive, they increase exponentially. And therefore, in the so we want, in the end, want to compute with x of this form and y some other function. But this is the problem. So we got stuck for a moment to understand how this take the limit beta. For alpha positive, remember that beta has to be minus alpha is negative. So, the, so you can single out a first term. This is very nice analytic. But the problem is this term. These are two by two block. 
to if you use block metric stuff. So these are a vector of two element, and these also these are two by two matrix essentially, and these are two block. The problem if you look at this, essentially the scalar product you have a sum of four term because they are two by two. If you look at each term when beta negative because there is some f beta term, they explode. So this object written as sum of four term, some of them are simply infinite when beta. So are not integrable. So the scalar product will be ill post. Staring a lot of time on the formula, he realized that actually, if in this element, we remove the essentially f, f, f of this f beta term, this scalar like g ten the x, but the scalar product is the same. Essentially, the term from here are kind of orthogonal with respect to something coming from here. So after a while, we understood how to do, and then it was finished. Because once we go, once we made this term tough, we had to, to take a, the large asymptotic limit, but this is really standard stuff. This is not the identity. So the point is that after the right hand side, of course, I did not write the formula, but this one is an, is going to, it does not diverge. So this is an L2 object. This is L2 and everything is L2. And the scalar product is well defined negative. So the structure is the same. We had a, a key issue that we had to solve that we spent some time because at the beginning we didn't know what to do, but eventually it turns out to. Okay, good. It was a bit faster than expected, a three, four slide more. So now let's see, we have the full space and the half space. Let's try to compare the structure. So the F1 parameter family is just because, well, the limiting distribution depends on how you are moving away from the characteristic line. So there is this W, this bike range with parameter and W. For the hash space, we already have at, at least, I will mention something more, a two parameter family, because you have the distance from the characteristic, but also the input rate, the delta. So we have two parameter family. The first case, we have the terminal structure, integrable that we used, and the hash space, we have Pfaffian structure. The analytic continuation for spool space turns out to be quite straightforward while it was not so easy for the half space. And I would also mention that if you look at the multi-point in full space, it was also not so easy. On the other hand, if you look at the first picture, one of the first picture, if you look at this situation, this situation correspond alpha negative. And in this scaling, alpha negative to correspond delta going to minus infinity. So when alpha goes to minus infinity, you should come more and more close to the full space picture. This is at least the same I was saying. It, and this you can do after the limit. So if you take the S to be, now I recenter to have mean zero. So this shift is just because I now I center to this. If you put this one as a function, and I look at the distribution from say the expected value with respect thinking of this as the parameter, this F means zero like the bike range is zero. And then if you call u, w minus delta, indeed the distribution function when u goes to infinity means delta goes to minus infinity becomes the bike range distribution, as the first claim was suggesting. So in a later paper, we extended the result to multipoint distribution, where we had essentially to use the trick analytic continuation for the full space, doing something similar, and the one we used here. And a half space problem, you, you might 
ask the question, we want to know something not about only a region distribution at fixed time, but maybe also at different times. And there was a talk by Alessandra a couple of weeks ago, you can look online, where we got some result about the covariance close to the characteristic for the stationary or also not point-to-point -point problem. I don't go in the detail because you can look at the paper or in the talk that you record, is recorded, at least I think it's recorded. Now, this is not the end of the story because as so if, if you think in terms of TASIP, so what do you have? You have an input. So Liget in 75, it, it considered the first day finite system where you have an input rate, and, but, and then when you are at the boundary, it goes down, out, or some exit rate. Then he found families of, the, well, there were of course some family of uh, stationary measure. If you take the was infinity, essentially what you have, if one, you have two parameters. One parameter tells you the density of the input rate from the left. And the second parameter tells you the asymptotic density at infinity. Now, this case corresponds when the input rate is such that, that the density is constant everywhere. In this case, then one have a product measure for the stationary measure, but in general, it's not. In some recent work by Guillaume and Pierre, and uh, I saw Alexander, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. So this is the first name. But, and Ivan, so in this, they actually, con in, this, in this paper, they consider, for example, the LPP in half space, and they built up stationary measure where you have really these two parameters. At least the model, has shown that this is stationary. I don't know if you will speak about something related next, next week from the title of the talk might have some connection or may not. But just to say that if you have the general, in half space, the general situation, you have a three parameter. One parameter for the jump rate coming in, one for the limiting density, and one for the position where you are away from the characteristic line. So in this case, away from the from the diagonal. So we are, in principle, the, prop, the model has one more degree of freedom, which we did not include. It's exactly the case where you don't have IID increment or IID. In TASEP, the measure is not IID. But there was actually one paper I did not cite here where there was some work in, with matrix method ansatz this matrix product and Zacht by Stefan Groskinski in the, in the PhD thesis with Herbert. They kind of try also look at the, they look at, try to write down the stationary measure. But of course it's not product measure, so it's, it's a bit complicated. Let's see if someone wants to sit down and manage to do a asymptotic from the model that Ivan and, Guillaume wrote down explicitly in the very recent paper. And with this, I managed to be five minutes shorter than expected, so it's very good for you. Thank you very much, Patrick. We have plenty of time for questions now. So who would like to start? Um, so w when you want to study the off-diagonal uh, uh, term, if the measure is stationary and you know the, 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 the stationary distribution, is it possible to study the, the point to point and then uh, to, ex to understand the, 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 I mean, the distribution everywhere using the, uh, some other process? I don't know if I'm they clear. They are correlated, no? no, because they are strongly correlated in principle. Okay. Otherwise, in the full space would be also exactly like that. Mm -hmm. So looking like also in the full space from a given position is like a random walk. 
the statistic. But it's not that the FKPZ with a parameter to be u is the one coming from KP, FKPZ at w equal to zero, I think an independent Brownian motion. It's not going to be. Well, a large scale, then you get Gaussian because you go away from the diagonal. And then of course it is, but the, the real F is not. So they are strongly core. Therefore it's not really so easy. Unfortunately, <laughs> I would say. So I just have uh, a very nice talk. I mean, I just have a technical question and one sort of a more general question. But one knows, I mean, the technical question is, uh, you know, in the stationary case, uh, you know, where you have input and output, I mean, then you know that the stationary meshes are matrix products. Yes. I mean, is that of any, any use or is it? Uh... I did not try to use the formulas to get some. I see, okay. But I know, hey, this work of Stefan, there are some matrix formula, product formula, but then yeah, you need that's... to use them to do some asymptotic. This I did not even yeah. try. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> And then, uh, okay, so the other one is just a standard question. I mean, um, you know, one, uh, as you know very well, I mean, one, one interesting problem is to look at the full space, but have sort of a defect line, uh, you know, at the origin, right? I mean, you know, you do just test a triangle, but take the full square, and then you put sort of extra weight along the diagonal. Uh, you know, many people sort of wanted you to know that. I mean, is there any, any progress in understanding such kind of case? I mean... So it's just, just a full square yes. and you put, you know, extra weights along the diagonal and then you well, this is not like fitting a, in the like a pinning transition and a deep yes. pinning and then, you know, these kind of things, right? And the only result I know it was this paper by Vladas, Pazu and so on, 2014, where they got some result, but isn't, they are not saying they, in, they are using some input from integrable system. But the system itself is not a integrable, it's not a sure process or a sure process, something like that. So you don't have a starting point which is already something well defined, something which is from the start, you can just do algebra and analysis. You need to use some probability, probabilistic argument as well. So the only paper I know is that one that probably you also know. Further questions? Okay. Does, um, <clears throat> does this first passage percolation problem um, have any relations with percolation? The last or the first? No. Your, well, your, your uh, the real system, percolation your model, is uh, the real first passage or last passage percolation. <laughs> is um, is that related to percolation in a, an intimate way? So the the first passage percolation is the one that intimately related to the real percolation. Okay, okay. And this is negative way so my but this is not direct, but it's supposed to be in the same class. The, but I would not say that this is exactly. Would, would not see this much like a real model for for physical percolation, although it should be in the same class. Okay. It's more like what is growing is like an interface, like a KPZ interface. So in, in yeah. some sense, there is some relation, but the standard really uh, percolation that everyone has in mind that the water goes through would be the first passage percolation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Which... More questions? Maybe I can ask a, a naive question. So you showed us two last passage percolation models on wedges with angle pi over two and pi over four. Can you say anything about other angles or is it not um, exactly solvable maybe? So if you have, let's have a picture. Let me see a picture, uh, maybe a nice picture. So like this one, something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, you could, one depend a little bit. 
in some cases you can, but you have to. So for example, if you have this line and then, and this is just the, so the point, the process from here to a point here. So if you, if you change the end point here, it's going to be an array process. So if you, if you add say the last region is going in this direction, then you can write in terms of using a variational formula. So if it goes in this direction, you have to sit down a little bit. So if it goes to this direction, but not 45 degrees, then, so think about alpha equal to zero so that the characteristic would come around zero. But if you do something like that, then essentially it's like the point to point because you have to think what happened in the process around the origin. There you have to scale in the two direction, the space and time direction. And there, when you do the scaling, even a, a wedge can be, become an infinite wedge under the scaling. Okay, thanks. Um, if there are no more questions, let's thank Patrick again.